Hey, it's Nas from Astronomy, and in today's video, we'll be making a little solar filter hat for my 60mm telescope. It looks a little bit like this. It's much smaller than the last hat you saw on my head in the last video. This hat is super simple, and it'll go on my AT60ED refractor. So it's a small refractor, it's an F6, it has, a, it has an aperture of 60 millimeters, a focal length of 360 millimeters. So I test this out at both native focal length as well as with a 2x Barlow, which takes this effective focal length of 720 millimeters. So the sun looks really big and I was pleasantly surprised at the quality and the sharpness of the sun in both focal lengths. So the total cost of this filter can be as low as $12. That assumes that you only have to buy two things and that you have all the tools you need to put things together. A quick summary of the materials that you'll need are a solar filter, construction paper, cardboard, some kind of glue, I used glue stick and hot glue gun, a cutting tool such as a utility knife or scissors, and a ruler for measurement. So the first thing you'll need is a solar filter. Now I have here is a filter that you've seen in one of my previous videos. It's a four by four inch solar light solar filter made by Thousand Oaks Optical. It was purchased from Agena Astro. So I'll link to that in the description below. Um, disclaimer is that it's an affiliate link. You don't have to use it, but I would appreciate it if you would. If you would. And this filter cost $10 on Agena Astro. I think it's very economical. And I used a similar sheet for the 2017 Eclipse, also from Thousand Oaks Optical. And that four inch sheet isn't the one I actually use. So I also bought this 10 by 10 inch sheet. You can see that some pieces are already cut out. And this was only $25. So it's, it's a much bigger bang for your buck. And I estimated that the pieces I cut out, uh, there's actually two pieces that I cut out here, that it cost me about $3 out of the $25 to make. So I still have a lot more that I can make. And this is a silver black polymer, just like the solar eclipse glasses I reviewed in my last video. And the second thing you may need to purchase is some kind of construction paper. So I bought this big sheet from a local hobby store. Uh, it cost me $2. So, and I cut out just a very small strip of it and most of it is still here. So the production cost of this little hat here is very low. And the rest of the items I had, so I'm not gonna go through them one by one, just mention them really quickly. Um, and I assume that you have a lot of these too. So with that said, I wanna mention that your filter really does not have to be perfect. So if you look at this, it's actually not perfect. It's not a perfect square. It may look like a perfect square, but it's not. The two sh cardboards are kind of different sizes. I did my best to make them the same. This doesn't act, the hole in the middle doesn't have to be completely centered either. So as long as you make sure that the, there is no light leak in the solar filter itself, that no stray light is going into your telescope from the sun uh, and it's completely covered, you can make your solar telescope filter as ugly or as pretty as you want. Uh, it really doesn't matter. It'll work just as well. And the last thing I'll mention is that if you have like a four inch telescope, you don't need to make a four inch filter. You can go as big or as little as you want. Uh, only thing is that if you go small, that your field of view for your imaging or for your eyepiece may be a little smaller uh, than you'd like, but the sun, depending on what kind of focal length you're working with, it may not even matter. So that's just something to keep in mind. And you'll notice here that I make square cuts even though the back is cylindrical. So most telescopes are cylindrical, so you may want, you may think that, you know, cut out a circle here. You can do that, but I'll tell you that making square cuts is much easier. So now let's take a look at how I made my solar filter. First, I'll cut out the strip from the construction paper using my utility knife, and it doesn't have to be too thick. Then I'll use a glue stick to stick the paper to itself once I wrap it around the circumference of my telescope. I use a tiny bit of tape to make sure that it's extra secure. And then I'll test it out on my scope to make sure that it fits nicely. Then I'll use my scopes cover and a ruler to mark out some basic dimensions of the cardboard that I want to cut out, making sure that it's kind of squarish. I use the utility knife to cut out one piece, and once that's done, I use that as a template for the second piece and use my utility knife to cut that out as well. So I have two pieces that are about the same dimensions. Then I use the telescope cover once again to give myself an idea of how big the inner cutout should be and mark it out with a ruler, making sure that it's kind of squarish. And then I cut out the first piece using the utility knife and then I use it as a template for the second piece again. So my inner cutout is about two and a half inches and I decided that I want a three inch square piece of solar sheet. 
So I use a ruler and one of the cardboard pieces to help me figure out where I want to cut it. And once it's cut, I'll test it out over one of the inner cutouts of the cardboard and make sure that it fits nicely. Then I'll use some glue stick and secure it to the first cardboard. And then I'll put the other cardboard on top, making sure that there's no leak, there's no light leak, there's no holes going through the bottom. And once that's done, I'll use hot glue gun to secure the two pieces of cardboard to one another. I use plenty of glue to make sure that it's sturdy and make sure there's no light leaks anywhere. Next, I'll take the ring of construction paper and put tiny bits of glue on two sides and then test it out on my scope to make sure it fits. And once I was satisfied, I glued the rest of it and made sure it was shut. I also glued the inner parts too for extra sturdiness, but you should be careful if you use hot glue gun because that can damage or melt your solar sheet. Once that's dried, I test it out on my scope and make sure that it fits, and it fits like a glove. There you go, it fits very nicely there. So next, we'll take it outside and see if we can see the sun. In my backyard, looking at the sun between the tree and the house, I have my AT60 with my homemade solar filter on my manual Orion Skyview Pro mount. It's all focused onto my Canon T5i DSLR, and here's a live view of the sun digitally zoomed in at 10x. So it looks a little bit smaller when in full view. So once I take a picture, you can see the full live view there, and it's much smaller, but it's very sharp. I also tried this out the next day with a Barlow lens so that I can image the sun at f12 with an effective focal length of about 720 millimeters. The AT60 couldn't go far enough out, so I had to rig two Barlows together to get the proper backspace. The sun barely fit my field of view, but it looks very sharp and the details of the surface were amazing. The sunspots looked so much crispier than just without the Barlow lens. So here's the image of the sun that we just saw. This was taken with my T5i uh, at the native 360 millimeter focal length at ISO 100, and the exposure time was one one thousandth of a second. So this is just a single shot, no lucky imaging done here. So if you take a closer look at the sun, you can see that the sunspots are more prominent. Uh, it looks really good. The shape of the sun is good. The color of the sun is good and it just looks good, in my opinion. And here is the sun with the 2x Barlow. You can see that the sunspots actually look a little bit clearer. So I, I had the aspect ratio of my T5i incorrect, so I didn't get the whole view of the sun here, but it was this big. So I didn't do any cropping on the vertical height of the image. So I just did cropping on the on the horizontal side, but you can see that it looks really big and it looks really great. You can see some sunspots coming up on the edges as well. So I hope that was helpful. And if you end up making your own solar filter hat, let me know, Should send me a picture, I'd love to see it. If you have any questions about any part of the process, please ask and I'm more than happy to answer your questions. Please always view the sun safely. Never look at the sun directly without using proper filters. They're cheap to make, as you see that this was super easy to make, super cheap to make. And with the two eclipses coming up, looking at the sun in a safe way has never been more important. I plan on making a few more of these solar eclipse, solar safety, solar viewing videos in the coming months. So subscribe and get notified and come back to watch those. I, I promise you that I'll try to make them as informative as possible. And if you want me to cover a specific topic, let me know. I am still waiting for my H-Alpha telescope to be delivered, so that's definitely going to be a video at some point whenever I get it. It's been, it's been months since I ordered it. Until next time, clear skies.